All right, today we're talking about maximum heart rate and in particular, how to measure it. My name is Shona Hendricks and I'm from coachparry.com. And before we get stuck into the nitty gritty, I'm gonna hand you over to Lindsay to dive into what exactly is maximum heart rate. Before Shona takes us through how to measure maximum heart rate, let's talk a little bit about what it is and why do we need to know it. So maximum heart rate is the maximum number of beats per minute that your heart can functionally make to pump blood around the body faster so we can get numbers that are potentially higher than that but that only happens when the heart is under extreme duress and when that happens it stops pumping the blood efficiently uh, around the body so what we are talking about today is that maximum functional number to pump blood around the body this happens when, you guessed it, when we are pushing ourselves to the extreme limit of um, physiological stress. Why is this number important? It's critical because if we know maximum heart rate, we can make sure that we set the correct intensities across all the exercise session types that we want to do and we can elicit the optimal physiological response from our bodies by training at the right place for that particular session. Cool, now that we know what maximum heart rate is, let's talk about how we measure it. There's a couple of different ways that we can do this. The two sort of uh, headings or subheadings of this is either in a laboratory sort of setting or in a field setting. So let's touch on the lab stuff first. Ideally, and this would be the gold kind of standard, is getting your maximum heart rate test done within a laboratory. The way we do that test is on a treadmill uh, and you essentially start running at a very easy pace and we build you up slowly until you get to your maximum. That essentially looks something like this when we land up uh, finishing the test. We have a measure of time and speed over here and a measure of heart rate on the side. So heart rates uh, and then time and speed or time and uh, pace, however you sort of want to get that. And we essentially build yourself up until we get you to your maximum. So we either do a ramp test where we are building you up nice and slowly where that tends to happen. Alternatively, they can also do something what we call as a step test where you're starting up and then it levels off for a little bit. You get to steady state. So you're working in about for three minutes and you get to a steady state and then they ramp up that speed again. And so that test goes as well. The issue with the uh, step test is that test takes a lot longer than the ramp test does. And we don't want this test to take too long because very often what goes on then is there's peripheral fatigue that happens and it never really gives you a true reflection of your maximum heart rate. So that's in the lab. That is the best way to measure it uh, when we're looking at maximum heart rate. Very often those laboratory tests are done with um, oxygen or, or gaseous exchange and gas analysis or blood analysis and that can give you a lot of other information around VO2, uh, gaseous exchange, lactate thresholds and so on and very often your maximum heart rate test is done in conjunction with those. The field test uh, can be done and a lot of people get this wrong when they're just looking at their maximum heart rate in a long run or in a sort of heel session or something like that and what we're wanting to do is not just pick out the highest number that your heart rate goes to because very often your chest belt might have shifted to slightly and that'll give you an, un or an unreliable or false uh, maximum heart rate. So one of the best ways that you can go out and measure this in the field is find yourself a track, obviously do a really really good warm-up uh, and then from there you're going to do three sets of 400 meters. So you're going to run a 400 meter as fast as you can, you're then going to rest for a minute, you're going to do another 400 meter test, you're going to rest for another minute and you're going to do another 400 meters. We then sort of gauge as to where the maximum of your heart rate is within that test. By just going out and doing a 5k run, you're not necessarily looking at your maximum as again, as I say, those little spikes in, in your uh, readings and your heart rate readings when you look at that graph are sometimes false uh, maximum readings. The other thing that we really just have to be cognizant of, and this is absolutely key, is the equipment that you're using. If we're measuring all of this, but you don't have the right equipment or getting reliable readings, then it's not worth anything. And so 
Most watches today do have a wrist-based heart rate uh, measurement, and yes, it works fine, and it gives a, a decent reading, but it is nowhere near as reliable as a chest strap, and a reliable chest strap at that. You want that chest strap to be fitted very tightly around the chest, and also to uh, make sure that the, the leads have been wet a little bit as well to help with the conductivity. Ensuring that all of that is fine, then you know you the, get the numbers you are getting are reliable numbers, and then you can really make good deductions from those numbers and apply this into your training zones. Now, I just want to touch on how often we should be retesting this. As you can imagine, your, your physiology is constantly changing. So <laughs> we can't test this every week. That would be an absolute waste of time. So my sort of general advice is to test it do this sort of testing at the beginning of every season to give you a nice idea of where you're at and then be able to adjust your zones accordingly. Obviously, the fitter you get, these things are going to be constantly changing. And so we need to make sure that we're reassessing this quite often. I would say at the minimum uh, once a year, at the beginning of every season, you can look to do it again mid-season to readjust some of those zones because I think obviously as you're getting fitter, uh, we need to readjust those zones from there. This also just ties in a little bit as to why this process might be a little bit flawed. Your physiology is ever-changing. And by using maximum heart rate, we need to ensure that we're not just only focusing on that in order to get our training zones. Very often, maximum heart rates can be um, a little bit flawed in this methodology as well. Because as you're getting older, perhaps, maximum heart rate doesn't always uh, you know, get to the right sort of reading. And some of the testing can be very flawed. And so if you are absolutely using these zones by the book in your training, um, you just need to make sure that your testing A has been done correctly and that you're not using those age-related maximum heart rate formulas because there's a lot of variance in there. To be honest, I personally prefer to use threshold heart rate as a measure for working out our zones, which is an entirely different uh, way of, of working out your, your zones. However, I find it to be a lot more relative to the person and doesn't necessarily have some of the flaws that maximum heart rate training does and maximum heart rate testing. I mentioned how there's peripheral fatigue that happens, and so you don't always get an exact measure of your maximum heart rate. So the threshold heart rate can very often be a more direct sort of measure and it's something you can repeat a lot more often and so it's a lot easier to test as well. If you'd like us to do a video on that, what I'm saying around threshold heart rates and how to test it and how to use it in your training, let us know in the comments below and we'll, we'll be sure to look into that. And if you enjoyed this video and got a lot of value out of it, hit the like button below and uh, yeah, check out for, look out for some of our other videos.